Hello there and welcome. I'm Juliana Michaels and thanks so much for joining me here on the scrapbook.com YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use the brand new 49 and Market and Sizzix Stamps and Dies designed by Katie Peretit to create a beautiful mixed media style card. The design and style of these stamps and dies really makes creating a mixed media effect so very easy. So for this card, the supplies I'm going to be working with are the Floral Mix Cluster, the Engraved Wings, Hello You, and the Painted Pencil Leaves Stamp and Die Sets from 49 and Market by Katie Peretit and Sizzix. And the inks I'm gonna be using are some various colors of Distress Oxide ink. I've got Antique Linen, Fossilized Amber, and Scattered Straw. I'm also using Peeled Paint, Forest Moss, and Shabby Shutters. I'll be using some Ground Espresso Distress ink, and I'm also working with Archival ink in Ground Espresso and Frayed Burlap. I'm also gonna be working with some watercolor pencils in Fossilized Amber and Scorched Timber. I have. Uh, be using a water brush, but you could also use a paintbrush. I've got a blending brush and then a distress sprayer. And the paper I'm going to be working with is distress watercolor paper just because it will stand up to the different mediums that I'm going to be working with in the addition of the water. So that um, I would definitely recommend some sort of watercolor paper or if you use different kinds of inks, if you prefer, you could switch out these oxide inks and use dye inks or distress ink. Um, it'll just give you a different look. And um, you know, just make sure the paper though that you use works with the types of inks that you're working. Um, I recommend definitely, if you're gonna use the oxide inks, you definitely want to use some sort of permanent waterproof ink for the stamping, just so that it won't bleed or fade out on you. Now let's get on with the making. So to get started, I'm going to be stamping on a piece of Distress Watercolor paper just because it will handle the type of techniques that I'm gonna be using for this card. And the stamp set I'm gonna be working with here is the new 49 and Market by Katie Peretit Painted Pencil Leaves Stamp and Die Set. And I'm gonna be just stamping this outline image to start with and I'm just gonna get this placed in my um, on the paper here in my stamping tool. And I'm going to use uh, archival ink, which is just a waterproof ink. So any type of permanent waterproof ink will work. And I'm just gonna get this inked up here real good. And the reason I'm choosing to use this ink is because it will work well with the other inks and mediums I'm going to be working with for um, this card. So one thing for this technique is when you are, if you are using a stamping platform, I'm going to be stamping this again. So I want to be able to make sure that I can get this lined back up again, which is why I'm going to use the stamping platform. And I'm going to leave this stamp in the platform and then I'm going to flip this around so I can use some of the other stamped layers to add some color to the leaves. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is stamping some of the leaves with some Distress Oxide inks. And the colors I'm using are Shabby Shutters, Peeled Paint, and Forest Moss. And I just kind of wanted um, some different shades of green that would kind of help um, give a little bit of some interest and um, natural effect to the leaves. and. I'm going to I'm going to just figure out which stamps go on to which leaves and then I'm going to kind of figure out which ones I want to do what colors. And I think I want to have the ones that are kind of more towards the front be with the lighter color. And then the ones towards the back I'll do with some of the darker colors, so do that one with peeled paint and that one with peeled paint. And then these here, I think I'll do with um, the shabby shutters. 
And then a little trick, just so I could stamp these two images at the same time, I actually trimmed that stamp off just a teeny bit um, on the end here because otherwise it was just hanging off and it was a little too long, so I couldn't um, get uh, the stamps both on there at the same time. So now I'm just gonna close this up here and I'm going to stamp those with uh, shabby shutters. And when you're working with oxide inks on the kind of clear stamps or in any kind of stamps really, you just kind of have to keep tapping the ink on there until you get kind of decent coverage because it does want to pool up just a little bit and it's just kind of the nature of the ink. But it gives kind of a cool distressed effect. So, um, you know, that's always good in my book. So, and you know, if you wanna stamp multiple times, you can, you know, if you feel like, oh, it didn't get a good coverage, you can just add a little more ink and stamp again. And then, you know, then that's ready to go. And then you can just set these off to the side and, and clean those off easy enough. And then next we're gonna add the next layer of colors here and just kind of get, you know, using that guide from that first layer, the outline, to just kind of help guide where to line these stamps up. And this, these do kind of overlap just a teeny bit, so I'm gonna stamp these two first. And I'm gonna use peeled paint here. And you also, when you're working with these kind of stamps too, right when you're first pulling them out of the packaging, you might need to kind of clean them and condition them a little bit because they will have a little bit of a residue on them just from the manufacturing process. So I recommend, um, you know, you can either actually wash them with a little soap and water. Um, you can rub the palm of your hand over the stamp to kind of help remove some of that. Um, you know, there's, there's a, you can take an eraser and rub over them. There's several different options that you can do to get, um, to get that uh, residue off of there. Okay, there's that one. And now we're gonna do this last one here. And then last layer we're gonna do here is kind of, I've been calling this the splatter layer. And get that lined up there. And for this layer, I'm gonna use the forest moss. that just clean off your stamp <laughs> Got a little water which when I'm just cleaning stamps that have oxide ink on them anyway I just I always use um, just a little water and a lint-free rag So there's that layer. Now, as you can see, that outline that we had stamped earlier is um, kind of disappeared, and that's just from the nature of the oxide inks being layered on top of it. So that's where we're gonna flip it back around, get it all lined back up again. And then we can stamp it again with that archival ink.
and then that outline will kind of pop back to life again here. So there we are. So there you can see the finished leaf. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna repeat that entire process a second time so that I have two leaves um, stamped and colored just the same way. And then from there, I'm going to take the coordinating die and I'm gonna line that up on the stamped image and run that through my die cutting machine. So when I do die cutting with a coordinating stamp and die set, I'd like to use some sort of mint tape or washi tape some kind of uh, not super sticky tape, but use that to help me keep the die in place when I run it through my machine. Cause sometimes it will shift a little bit and um, you know, and then it'll mess up all that work um, from that you just did with all the stamping. So, you know, you can grab a couple pieces of the tape, place them on, just make sure it's touching the paper and the die. And then you can just, you know, run this through your die cutting machine and, and not have to worry about it shifting and moving on you. Here are the two die cut leaves that I created. And now I'm just going to set these to the side and continue working on the other pieces for the card. So now I'm going to add, um, I'm going to stamp this dragonfly from the 49 and Market engraved wings stamp and die set. So there's three stamps in here and they each have a coordinating die that goes with them. And I had plenty of paper left over from that paper I used with my leaves. So I'm just gonna stamp the dragonfly on that same paper. And I'm also going to stamp this image using the um, Ground Espresso Archival Ink. Get a nice impression there. So now I'm gonna flip this around and add some color to this stamp. Now there, there aren't the layers like there were for the leaf set, but so I'm gonna use the leaves to add the color here. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of them here and just kind of get them so that they're mostly covering the wings. I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit so get that all the way across there and just in case I know that's still got some ink on there that's not totally dry so just to keep it off my watercolor paper it's just a piece of scrap paper in there so now I'm gonna ink I'm gonna add some ink to the dragonfly here using some scattered straw oxide ink there we go and then we had a little bit of like some darker interest using using this um, splatter stamp position that there and so now I'm going to add some ink to that one I'm going to use some fossilized amber gonna flip that back around this image is not quite as noticeable um, that you've lost some of that detail but still kind of like to do that second stamping just to really bring it back to life see totally makes a huge difference so then now I'm just going to um, line up the die and put some tape on there and then run that through my die cutting machine and so here is a look at the die cut dragonfly. So there's plenty of cardstock left over. So I'm just gonna continue using that. And for this one, I'm gonna 
use it to stamp my sentiment using the Hello You stamp set. And I'm just gonna be using this Celebrate one here. And I'm just gonna kind of stamp that here in the center of my cardstock. And again, I'm just gonna use that archival ink. impression there go yeah. and then I'm just gonna trim that into a little strip here using my paper trimmer so I'm just gonna kind of line up the bottom of the letters with the guide here and then just trim that down that way and repeat that on the top here go and then to add a little color to this I am going to um, ink it with some distress oxide ink and antique linen I'll do that first kind of get the outer parts here of it I'm kind of putting more ink out towards the outside edges of the paper and not worrying about getting it like solid all the way across, but you certainly could. So it's kind of up to you there. And now I'm going to use one of the watercolor pencils to color in the letters. So I'm just going to use a water brush to kind of pull off some of that um, pigment from the watercolor. And so I don't, I'm not getting this super wet and I'm just going to use that then to add some color here gonna color these in I'm not looking for it to be super perfect I just want to get a little color in there you'd also if you don't have a water brush you could also just use a small small paint brush in in some water to pull the ink off of here or the pigment off of here And if you do happen to get, you know, a little bit outside the line, you can also just clean off your brush and then kind of wipe it off, especially if you're using a lighter color like a yellow. If you tend, if you're using like a pink or a red, sometimes those are the stain, the pigments in those are a little stronger and um, they might stain the paper a little quicker. And then while I have this out, I'm also going to color in the body on this dragonfly and just grabbed one of my brown pencils. This happens to be scorched timber. I'm gonna just add a little. There we go. All right. And then just you know, kind of want to set these. I usually kind of just lay them on a paper towel and let that um, water dry before I pack these back up and or put them with other pencils. Otherwise that pigment tends to transfer off of there. So now I'm gonna start on the background for the card. And for that, I'm going to do some more stamping and some inking. I'm gonna add some stamping with this floral mixed cluster stamp. This also has a coordinating die as well. But I'm not gonna use the die this time, I'm just gonna use the stamp. And I'm Gonna stamp a little bit of this kind of off the corner because I'm gonna be this is gonna be going into the background, so I'm not super worried about 
the um, image being 100% perfect. And for this, I'm just using some archival ink again. And this is frayed burlap. I just wanted a light brown because I want it to kind of fade into the background. I don't want it to be like really super bold. And if it's not a perfect image, I'm not worried about that either. And then I'm gonna slide it down, kind of do that same thing down this corner. Let's get a little more ink on there. There we are. And then I'm going to go back to that leaf stamp set. And there are some like splatter stamps that come with that. And I'm going to just kind of position them here and there around on the background just to add some splatters and interest. And then to kind of help me figure out where to position them, I'm going to kind of play around like where I think I'm going to put these leaves. And I'm going to be kind of layering these two leaves over each other and actually trimming them down a little bit. So I just, but I just want to kind of make sure that those splatters are actually going to, you know, show. I'm going to stamp some of them there. And I'm going to stamp these with the Ground Espresso Archival Ink. and dark so I'm going to stamp that a couple times here there we go and then I could probably get away with just kind of flipping that around yeah I'm just going to stamp them again instead of moving them and putting them in different positions. That I think will work. Okay. So now the stamping is um, finished on our background. Now I'm going to add some inking to the background here. And to do that, I'm just going to use some Distress Ink in Antique Linen. And I'm using Distress Ink instead of Oxide Ink because the Oxide Ink has a some pigment in it. And so, as we saw earlier, that pigment will cover up the archival ink. So, if you want to do... Uh, oxide ink you might want to ink your background first and then do the stamping so that the stamping doesn't kind of get covered up and fade away on you if you apply the oxide on top of this this is going to really mute that design and you, know, you can kind of go as dark or as light as you want to with this it's really just kind of a personal preference. I wanted to go with a lighter color because I want the focus to really stay on the embellishments that we've created. So once that's all inked up, then you can take your spray bottle and just um, a couple options. You can do a slow squeeze and spritz across here. Um, you can also spritz some water into your hand. Use your fingers to kind of flick it on like that. I know there's lots of options. And then you can take your heat tool and dry that. And I've just placed it on a little kitchen trivet here so that 
my mat doesn't get warped. And you can just dry that till it's dry. And then when it's mostly dry, then you can also take a paper towel and kind of dab off some of that stuff, extra ink if you'd like. And then there is a look at the finished background. All right, so as I mentioned, I was gonna, I'm gonna layer these leaves here onto my background. And I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors here and just trim off a little bit of these leaves here that I don't need. Then you know you can adhere those however you'd like. Just a little liquid glue here. Kind of get these glued to each other, and then I got my sentiment. layer over here and ink we gotta I'm actually gonna scoot that down just a little bit here yeah there we go I'm just gonna get that centered on the back of the card. Play around with where I want my sentiment. And then the dragonfly. And I'll use a little bit of some foam tape to pop up that butterfly. And then I'm just gonna get this centered and then trim that off and then layer everything onto um, another piece of paper to kind of frame it all out. Here's a look at the finished card. To complete the background, I inked the edges with ground espresso distress ink. I then adhered the background onto a piece of pattern paper from the 49 and Market Color Swatch Ochre 6x8 paper pad. To finish the card, I added a couple of Crafty Garden Wishing Bubbles epoxy stickers to the sentiment piece. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the process I shared here using the new Stamps and Dies by Sizzix and 49 and Market designed by Katie Paratit.